Hey everyone, it's Lauren Elvin with Add a Pup Dog and Puppy Training. I've got notes, but I'm gonna keep it short. Um, this is a short, sweet, fun one. And it's about having fun. You should have fun training your dog. Perhaps more importantly, your dog should have fun while you're training them. Couple reasons. One, training is teaching. And teaching should be fun. Who did you prefer in school? Did you prefer, these are all math teachers for me, did you prefer the cold, detached, vindictive, petty, nasty, cruel disciplinarian, or Ms. Frizzle from the Magic School Bus, who got everyone enthusiastic about learning all sorts of crazy things, and whose students would follow her into a volcano or an intestine? <laughs> who would you rather have as your teacher? Who gets you more fired up about doing stuff, and who would you rather hang out with? I think it's pretty obvious. Two, dogs do what works for dogs. So yes, it makes you feel good. Yes, it's more fun for everyone, but also it's more effective. That's kind of how I am. Yeah, it's good, it feels good, but also science. Dogs do what works for dogs. They want to get good stuff and they want to avoid bad stuff. We know and have known for decades, about a century actually, that it's faster and more effective if we just work with the good stuff. If we work with giving out or sometimes withholding things that the learner really wants, then learning is faster and more effective. It sticks around longer and there's no fallout. So there's no possibility of psychological or behavioral fallout because um, it's just good stuff. <laughs> you either get the good stuff or you didn't get it that time. So dogs love the good stuff. They love to have fun. If you, I have a cat and a dog. You know the stereotypes. Oh boy, you said the word park. Everything's great. They want to get good stuff. If we can harness that enthusiasm into doing all the dumb human things we want them to do, then that's just easy. We've just taken all that dog enthusiasm and channeled it into sitting or rolling over or picking up a dead duck from a field or whatever it is you want them to do. It's faster and more effective. And if they learn that you are the source of all wonderful, good, fun things, then they're gonna to want to work with you. They're gonna become neurologically addicted to working with you and it will help your bond and your friendship in addition to helping you achieve whatever your training goals are. Baby talk your dog. Baby talk your dog. I'm gonna do, probably my next one's gonna be on how much we're yabbering at dogs all the time. But studies have shown, and anecdotally this is true, um, dogs listen better when you sound more exciting. Yeah, they do, when you sit, good job because we yabber all the time. They have to drown out 99.9% .9 of the sounds that come out of our mouth. And suddenly when we go like this, they go, okay, you're talking to me, this is fun. And it's baby talk. Um, Patricia McConnell actually did some, uh, I think it was her, her thesis, her thesis um, as an ethologist on how this is cross-cultural and cross-species. If we suddenly go up a couple octaves and that's what we do, it gets everyone's attention and it's it's baby talk for all sorts of species. Use it in training your dog. It's nice, it's fun, it also helps them know you're actually talking to them and it helps get that wiggle butt going. And if you've got wiggle butt going, then your prefrontal cortex is primed for learning. You're having fun and you're taking stuff in and you're feeling good about it and you're creating associations. Um, so I'm gonna skip ahead to that one actually. Creating associations is very, very important. It's going on all the time. They're learning about consequences of their behavior, operant learning, and they're learning associations with everything in their environment, but especially whatever's the most salient. So if they are looking at you and they're going, all right, they're saying the words, we're doing stuff, and you're being a jerk, or you're hurting them, or you're using something aversive, they're associating that with everything in their environment. So they can associate, there are dogs who try to bite people when someone says their name because so many bad things have happened when they've heard that. And if I would never want even a glimmer of that sort of dysfunction in the relationship I have with my dog, I want them to hear my voice and go, yes, I can't wait to do things for you. That's what I want. Or enthusiasm. I want to have a friendship with my dog. So it's important for that. But if your dog is scared or reactive or aggressive, it's especially important. The world would be a much better place if everyone had at least one person in it who they could count on unconditionally. 
and who gave them nothing but support and love. If everyone had their own personal Mr. Rogers, the world would be a utopia. If you can give that to your dog, and you can, do it. Especially if they're dealing with a behavior problem because then they have an anchor in the storm. They have someone that they know they can count on who will protect them, who will make chicken happen when they see monsters, and who isn't gonna put them in situations where they feel like they have to defend themselves. Excuse me. So it will help. It will help you with behavior modification if they know that you are the good thing. Even if it takes, you know, Oscar level acting on your part, even if the behavior modification you're doing is serious, if the aggression is, aggression is serious, your dog doesn't have to know that. <laughs> they just have to go, oh, there's a monster, oh, chicken time. Oh, there's a monster, oh, chicken time. Oh, there's a monster, but they're not coming. Oh, everyone's, you know, reading the body language that I've been throwing out for years and no one's been listening to, I have control over this situation. That's incredibly important in behavior modification and like I said, just in having a relationship with your dog. Let me skip back. Dogs are never gonna grow up, unfortunately, for <laughs> some dogs. They're never gonna grow up. They don't have to grow up and get a job and leave the house and you know deal with the world on their own. They're dogs. They're going to live with you, should live with you, for the rest of their lives and you're going to take care of, you should take care of, all of their needs. They don't have to have grit or determination or any of these, you know, macho things. And Mr. Rogers would argue kids don't need that either. They need love and support. If you want your dog to perform at a particular level of accuracy or proficiency, then you need, just like any other dog, you need to help them step by step get up to that level throwing them in the middle of it and saying get used to it you're gonna have to do it in the future is not gonna help anyone it's going to impede learning it's gonna slow it down it's not gonna get you where you wanted to go faster and it's gonna damage your relationship and it will probably damage your dog's relationship with whatever it is you want them to do so rather than being enthusiastic about picking up a dead bird in the field they're gonna go gotta do it <laughs> something's gonna hurt if I don't it's faster and more effective to do something that they want to do, to make it something that they want to do, so they're enthusiastic about doing it by themselves. Okay, last bit. Forgive me if I start crying. Dogs aren't around, <laughs> see? <laughs> Dogs are not around long enough. Your dog is not gonna live forever, unfortunately. And there is gonna be a day where you would do anything, see, sorry, where you would do anything to have your dog bark at other dogs and jump on you and tear something up, that day's gonna come. And when it is that day, I want you to be able to look back and say, we had nothing but fun. We lived our lives together, and every time we were together, to the best of my ability, sometimes I had to get shots, it was a good time, and I gave them everything I could, and I loved them every single day, and they knew it. That's a good life and that's a good goal and if you can do that you should give it to your dog and you can give it to your dog they're not here long enough so make it make it count while they are use treats use baby talk have fun play games be silly hop around it's gonna help you get to your goals faster but honestly that's not the important part the important part is you're having fun and learning stuff and building relationship with your dog. And that's what they want too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's important though. We don't have much coming up. Um, classes are winding down for the holiday season because it's crazy down. If anyone is interested in a three week or less, maybe a weekend um, brush up course or tricks weekend or something like that, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll start a poll or something. Um, we filled up, I think, one or two last year, but they have never really been that popular. Um, but then I get, you know, two months of people, you don't have a class, I'm dying over here. So I try to offer something, but, you know, not everyone signs up. Let me know if you are absolutely interested and cross your heart, we'll sign up for something. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a waste of time and effort. Um, let me know what you're interested in, we'll see what we can do about it. Games night is my signs in front of it it's the 26th i think it's the last friday in october um we're gonna have a couple new games we're gonna play ghost which is like playing horse but the word is ghost and with dogs instead of basketball it'll work 
we'll figure it out. And then we're gonna have a uh, pumpkin patch um, treat search, which we do, you know, every once in a while. I like to have like um, a tricks based, skills based thing, and then like sniffing out or eating hot dogs or something where you don't need any special skills like that. Let me know if you have any questions or requests. Um, if your request is for me to stop crying in videos, I agree. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye.